Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Good For The Soul. This is episode number 19. In this episode, I sit down with my brother, my friend, um, training partner, teammate, uh, Chaz Jordan. Uh, he is, so Chaz was a purple belt when I started Jiu Jitsu, right? So he was, I think he had already been fighting at that time and training. Um, so I think nine, maybe 10 years ago at this point, uh, we, we met and him and Paulie, we were like the trio at Ivan's for a little while. So he helped guide us uh, through jujitsu, there's this old video <laughs> of me and Polly drilling triangles, and Chaz, you know, on a Saturday open mat, Chaz coming up and kind of helping us um, kind of get through that motion. So it's it kind of funny to look back and see it. And we've been friends for a long time. We've been through ups and downs, and and on the mats, off the mats. But he's like a brother to me, and I've actually always been inspired by his story of what he's what he went through prior to finding jujitsu and his his struggles his his triumphs through jujitsu fighting boxing and everything he's accomplished um on and off the mats i'm super proud of him um he was he's my first friend you know my coach ivan he got his black belt while i was you know under him but he had been in the game for a long time but this is truly one of the people i was like really close to i hung out with every weekend and trained with all the time that got his black belt so that was super fun for me on the outside and having been uh, super close with him in, in many ways and shared shared those stories. I spent my entire 20s learning and training jujitsu with him. Um, so yeah, he's he got his black belt from James Weed over in Spokane, Washington, and he's trained at a bunch of different places, you know, with the boxing and MMA and jujitsu over the years. Currently, he's over at 10th Planet um, in the Seattle area, training with Nate Orchard over there. And so that's where we got to do an open mat, sit down and do the conversation. Guys, I'm super excited to share this with you. Chaz, if you're listening to this, I love you, my brother. And yeah, I'm excited to share a story with you guys. Um, but before we jump into that, guys, I just want to remind you, go to jockofuel.com. They got the best supplements out there, right? American made company, um, all good, healthy products, right? You're not going to find, you know, like this protein shake isn't jam packed with sugar, like at all. I don't think. Let's see, sugar content in here. I don't even see total sugars, less than one gram. I want you guys to go next time you're at the store and pick and pick up a different protein shake container and see what their sugar content is, right? Sugar is poison, we all know that. So th this is super cool, made in the US. It's, um, it's amazing, I love it, best tasting. Uh, the strawberry is actually my favorite. I'm running out of this, so I gotta go get on it, but guys, jockofuel.com get yourself some supplements protein powders the discipline goes are awesome um and yeah help yourself stay vitalized healthy refreshed also they have those superfood greens that's super popular right now because i know i don't eat my veggies like i should so that helps uh, again jockofuel.com put in good for the soul all one word at checkout get yourself 10 percent off guys without further ado let's hop into this conversation with my brother Chaz jordan dude my brother, I appreciate you sitting down with me, man. One of my best friends for years and years. Yes, sir. And just so everyone knows, you were responsible for teaching me jujitsu. Oh, man, don't tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, no, you were, a, I mean, you were a purple belt no. when I literally started jujitsu. Yeah, right? I was in a purple belt when you put on your white belt. That yeah, was that was crazy. Yeah. There's that old video yeah. of you teaching me and Pauly triangles. And you were just like, it's, it's probably because we were boxing together already, yeah. but you looked down. I remember seeing the, you look at us and kind of just like walk away. Like, what the fuck? I don't know, I a very interesting teaching style. There's like, uh, first you give like a compliment and then, you know, you gotta lay it on kind of thick after that. I'm like, all right, no, I'm just kidding, you're good, you're good. Yeah. Dude, all right, give this a shot. Cause yeah. I haven't had this flavor either. Shout out to Jocko Fuel, check out these discipline goes. Yeah, grad yeah, man, I got the sour apple. I've not had this flavor yet. Which one you got? I'm rocking out with the afterburner orange. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Let's try. Oh, damn. Tastes like orange. Tastes, Tastes like good. sour apple. This is good. I love this thing. Gratitude. Um, well, dude, I appreciate you sitting down with me. You're one of my best friends, my brother, for, um, for years and years now. Heck yeah. And since we started training, I've always thought you had a super inspiring story from where you started and where you've come, man. And so I'm actually really excited to talk to you on camera, put this out there for yeah. people. So talking good for the soul, man. Tell, tell me, where did your love for jujitsu come from? Man, um, <clears throat> so uh, I, you know, when I, I was growing up, uh, I never really was uh, physical. I never really I did, got into sports or anything. I never really did anything. 
and um, kind of came from a you know rough family. Um, you know, my dad was a, a pretty bad drug addict, and um, when my mom divorced him, she ended up getting with an equally bad drug addict. So like when I was growing up, it was really shitty and. You know, he was like super abusive and, uh, you know, for the longest time, you know, he would always tell me like, you know, you're a fat loser. Like, you know, he was just really, he was a really piece, big piece of shit. Yeah. So like, you know, you grew up, I grew up really like not really liking myself and, you know, my parents kind of took, you know, I, I gained a ton of weight. I think when I was like 19 years old, I weighed like 320 pounds. Yeah. It was not good. And um, because of all that, I was just angry all the time like I had just a chip on my shoulder you know I was kind of I was getting into trouble and um, funny enough I kind of got in a bad situation I had to leave town and uh, ended up going to college on a whim because I usually did pretty well in school mm -hmm. but I wasn't really like trying to do anything and went to college and there happened to be a Gracie Baja Jiu Jitsu school there and I didn't really know anything about Jiu Jitsu all I know is that I watched MMA and I loved MMA mm -hmm. I loved I just was like oh man these guys are just like it's not like boxing, you know, where you like, it was like these guys, I remember the first MMA fight, like everyone remembers um, uh, Forrest Griffin and Stephen Bonner. Yeah. I remember Diego Sanchez beating the shit out of Kenny Florian, taking oh, him down damn. and elbowing his face into, and I had never seen anything like that. I'm like, I want to do that. Yeah. And uh, so I found this Jiu Jitsu gym, you know, they had a gi on, I'd never really, I didn't really know what that was about, but um, I took a class. And I was instantly just like, it was just one of those things where like love at first sight kind of thing. Like mm -hmm. I put it on, I put on the gi and I r was rolling and I was kind of trying to learn stuff and I was so unathletic, but I was just, I was just hooked. Yeah. I was just hooked on it. Were you, were you still at that big weight when you started? Yeah, I was, I mean, I was 300, I mean, I guess at 320 pounds, yeah. I was like size 44 jeans, you know, double XL, everything. Um, yeah. Like not physical, like, if, like my body, like I couldn't like jump, I couldn't run. I really couldn't do a lot of stuff, um, but you know, I was able to do uh, jujitsu. You know, yeah. I was able to, and I, I just remember, <laughs> I just remember, I, I could only have the money for one gi, thank God. So what I would do <laughs> is I would roll in the morning, and then I would take my gi up and I would hang it up and I would spray it with Lysol because I was super broke. Because I couldn't, because yeah. uh, at the at the the dorms that you had the quarter of, quarters for your laundry, so yep. I couldn't wash it every single time. So I'd hang it up and I would spray it with Lysol, and it would kind of be dry. And then I would go to the night session, and I would like hang it up again. I would spray it with Lysol and like, try to make it like not so terrible. Yeah. And I ended up, it, I don't recommend that by the way. Like, yeah, that's, like, that's not the norm nowadays. nowadays. Like, it's not the norm nowadays. You did but, it how you, you but did back then you could be kind of funky and you got to get away with it. And uh, man, I just, I just. Yeah. Totally fell in love with it. Like you know, every training, every uh, chance I could get to train, I trained, and I just loved every second of it. And I loved, I loved the idea that we were all starting on this even, even ground. You know, like there was guys that were athletic, guys that weren't athletic. There was really muscular guys. There were skinny guys. There was fat guys. You know, there was just every. But we we're all like in this common place. We we're all trying to make each other better, yeah. and that camaraderie. And I just like I fell in love with it. Yeah. Man, ever since then, you know, I since I was 19, I'm 30, going to be 34 soon. I I literally have not gone more than a couple months without training, and usually that's because of injury. Yeah, but I've that's been awesome. I've been solid, yeah, for years. That, so talk to me a little bit about because again, I know your story, but it's always been inspiring, fascinating to me. But what got you actually through the door for the first time, other than seeing it? Like, how did you? hear about how'd you find it and then what were your nerves like walking through dude i mean honestly i i watched so much ufc <laughs> that i thought i was a ufc finder like <laughs> okay. i mean like i had tap out shirts like i th i was i was everything a fighter was except the fighting part. <laughs> you know and, it, and, it, and it, because you know when you're when you're young and I, I mean i see it now like looking back when you're older you know like in hindsight yeah i was just looking for like father figures and things like that you know yeah. it's like i was super into rap at one point so i was like backwards hats and you know just a goofball but then i saw mma and i was like dude i want to be like these guys you know mm -hmm. like i just they were so confident and you know they were like well spoken some were well spoken yeah. some were not well spoken but they went out there and they fought and they got up they shook hands you know they put it all out there and i was just like so um enthralled by that like i just respected that so much i wanted to be that so badly um that uh you know i just was like yeah like i convinced myself i was a fighter before i was ever a fighter like i'm this you know like da, da, da. um the first practice i went to man it was i mean i was i was nervous but i think i was just really excited like i was just like yes no like, like now like it deep like a voice in my head was like yeah now you don't have to just talk about it all the time now you can actually like back it up a little bit or you know like <laughs> yeah so I was just like, I was just really, really excited. And then it was just, it was just like epiphany after epiphany 
like when you shifted your hips like oh this is what oh like now i've seen this on tv like now i can do this like i was just it was just so it was just so like for me it was just like so relatable like every like it someone would tell you a move set step one two three and then I could do step one, two, three, and I was like, mm-hmm. holy shit! Like it was, it was just, it just made sense. It was I like one that. of the, it's one of the few things in my life that I picked it up, and it just made sense from the second I put the gi on. I, I cannot tie the belt to save my life. That took me a while. <laughs> to, that took me a while to make sense of. But everything about jujitsu just like spoke to me in a way that nothing else in my life ever had. Yeah. And um, yeah, dude. I mean, like I said, I, I was hooked. Like, yeah, I was done. So talking about that first stage, the, the um, I think that's very interesting trying to draw people in jiu-jitsu like what is that first three to six months like and for you at that time fitness wise and jiu-jitsu wise like what how did it affect you then and at, on the mats as well as outside of the gym so um when i first started the first like couple i mean the first month is obviously like for me especially being as heavy as i was you know like i said 320 pounds you know my knees you're, you're really start to, when you start when you go from zero activity to a lot of activity you, you become very aware of just how out of shape you are, right? Yeah. Like just like just how like non-physical you've been for you know so long. Um, so for me, a lot of it was just like learning how, like just like learning how my own body worked, like uh, just being aware of like how to how to like pull someone into a butterfly, and then like oh, like I need to flex my feet, and like oh, I can extend my like hips, and like moving the, like moving around, like being in control of your body, like yeah. a body awareness was a big thing, um, and then what it turned into is you started watching jujitsu then, right? Like when I first started, uh, you, I would train and then immediately I would like go on YouTube and I'd like look for jujitsu. And back then, like it wasn't quite as like main today. It's so mainstream. It's, it's insane. There's like so much free technique out there and like literally anything you want to know, you can look up. But back then it was very like, you just had, it'd be like a little bit more like hard to find. And I remember I like YouTube, like matches, like what was the best match of, whatever the year was, Mm -hmm. and it would be like Cobrina and like uh, the Mendes brothers, right? And they would be grappling out. And I was watching these little guys go. I was like, I want to be like that. Like, look at that movement. Look at that control. That's amazing. And I was like, well, to get like that, I got to lose some weight. Mm -hmm. I got to lose some weight. So what that turned into is it turned into a lifestyle change. It turned into, you know, instead of me going to the rec hall and getting like a cheeseburger, I would get a Caesar salad. I didn't know anything about nutrition. <laughs> so I'd get a Caesar salad, a chicken Caesar salad every single day for lunch and dinner. And I did that for like six to eight months. Oh shit. And I, I ended up, one. yeah, I ended up losing, you know, 80 pounds in my first like year of wow. jujitsu. Yeah. Like, um, and I would, uh, you know, I would, uh, I couldn't run. So I would go to uh, the school gym and I would jump on a bike and I would do like, like a minute as hard as I could, and then I would do a minute really slow, and then I would do a minute as hard as I could, and I would do an hour, and like that's, and I would just do an hour on the bike. You know, I would just find ways. Did you know that hit workout was a thing at that time, or you just like, I'm gonna do what I can and get after it? So I read, so I'd also read stuff. Like uh-huh. back then, you had like magazines, so I like yeah. go to like the Seven Eleven, I would get like a Jiu Jitsu magazine, and they'd be like hit workouts, like the new thing, and like you go really hard, and then you go really soft, and. It's like, I can do that. I can do a minute really hard. And I was like, so I'd start doing that. Cool. Now my hard minute was probably like not really hard, but hard for you. But I was time, doing yeah. it, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and that, and that's what it, for me, that's what it turned into. Like I did what I could, um, because I just, I just wanted to be that they were like back then. All I wanted to be was like a world champion. Like yeah. all I wanted to be was like an MMA fighter, like school and all that stuff was just like the, my backup plan. You yeah. know what I mean? But really I was there to like train. What did, what did it feel like? that first year timeline you said you lost 80 pounds like what did that do for your life um, what was that like man confidence for sure right yeah. my, i mean my confidence i went from you know really uh, shy um kind of quiet like, to, to to people who didn't know me to kind of being a little bit more like just confident like um you know i uh you know wasn't embarrassed to you know take my shirt off at, like a pool or something or because like, in ellensburg where i went to school i mean we have like really cold winters but then also like the summers can be like gnarly, you know, cause it's kind of like desert. So, um, you know, I didn't feel like I had to wear like sweatshirts everywhere I went. Yeah. Or I didn't feel like I, I just didn't, I didn't feel like ashamed of myself anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and then really what it was about, like really the, what it was all about was my performance on the mat. And I started to be able to do techniques, techniques that I couldn't do before. So when I first started, I think I was all about getting on top and I was always looking for an Americana because it was very simple. Like it worked for like my body frame. I just get on top, just look for that Americana and I was just, oh, I'll try to get it and I try to do it more. But then I was able to hit like an arm bar. Like it took me three months to hit an arm bar. Yeah, like it, it was just insane. 
And uh, but when I hit it, I was like, yes. Like every every training session, you got like a little bit better. Every training session, something made like a little bit more sense. And after a while, that just starts steamrolling. You know, like you jujitsu, you get what you put into it. Mm-hmm. You know, you show up once a week. You know, you're you're gonna you're gonna learn, but it may not be like as much as you'd like. But man, if you're going twice a day, six days a week, I mean, you're gonna see results. Yeah. Like, that's that's just all there is to it. Definitely, for sure. Um, jumping forward a bit, to, maybe to now, as you look back on your own jujitsu career and training, what are some of the other reasons that? because you've also been coaching for a long time, that other people step onto the mats that you hear are pretty popular. Man, there's, I mean, nowadays there's just so many reasons. I mean, today it's just a popular sport, right? I mean, like, it's really, um, there's like so much more exposure now. There's so much more, I mean, you have flow grappling, you have like, who's number one? You have, you know, a lot of people, I mean, ADCC has always been around, but now it's like, I mean, they're like you said, this is the biggest one ever. We're going to be attending that, yeah. you know, 10,000 seats. You know, the, the, the year, the event before that, there was only like 5,000, you know, it was like a little place. So it's really blowing up now. Mm-hmm. But um, all sorts of reasons, you know, people come in, they're just curious, you know, they see like UFC, you know, they want to learn something. Mm-hmm. Um, some people like me, you know, I had a real chip on my shoulder, man. Like I honestly, like the reality is like, I wanted to fight because I wanted to, I wanted to fuck people. Like that was yeah. my thing. I was pissed off. Like I wanted to, to, like in my mind, like the guy, like my mom's like guy that was always like saying this stuff. Like every person that I didn't like like or every like bully or whatever like had his face, and I was like, I want to fuck that guy. Yeah. Like that. That was really what it is. Sure. You know my, you know my professor uh, James Weed. He has a this thing that he says. It's not his quote, and he'll tell you that. But yeah, that's how I remember from. He says, um, uh, anger is what brought him to jujitsu, and love is what made him stay. And I like identify with that a lot because I was really pissed off. Like I did get into it because I was like, yeah, I'm here to like break bones. And burn, you know? <laughs> yeah. But the reality is, is like the, the camaraderie and the community and just like the learning and like, you know, putting yourself through it and just seeing like what you're capable of as a human being. I mean, like there's so much more to all of this than just like you can hurt somebody or yeah. like, you know, you can like fuck somebody. I mean, that, like for somebody who maybe who doesn't know, maybe they look at like a fighter and that's what they think. Yeah. But the reality is, is like to do this is you're really putting yourself through the entire human experience. I mean, there's loss, there's triumph, you know, there's failure and there's like huge successes. And, you know, you just see yourself. I mean, it's hard for me to like look back at my own stuff sometimes and kind of really pick it out. But man, I see like, like you. I mean, I remember when you were a white belt, you know, I remember, you know, when you moved around really kind of spazzy and, and now you're super skilled, right? You have tons of really great technique, you know, you're teaching now. So, you know, it just, it's such a, it's such a good thing just to like, to develop like your character, like who you are as a person. For sure. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, we have similar experiences to where we've grown up in the mat room, you know, whatever gym we were training at, like that's been home, you know, so it's cool. Um, Moving forward just a little bit, talk to me about that blue belt phase. Like, what did it feel like after starting that journey as a white belt, where you at weight-wise, and as you started to change your lifestyle and lose weight, and then you get that blue belt, what did it feel like for you? So it took me forever to get my blue belt. Okay. It took me like two and a half years to get my blue belt. Okay. Um, so I was, so when I was training, I was at school. I was training, so I trained like, through the whole summer, or through the whole like school year, like, and then during the summer, I would like go home and my mom uh, at the time lived in Spokane. So I would go uh, there for the summer and I would look for a gym. Cause I, at the time I'd only trained at this like great spot in a geek. Yeah. And I ended up finding a, um, oh my gosh, I'm gonna forget the name of it. But I, I, uh, I remember uh, it was a gym under, it was an MMA gym underneath a boxing school. So there's a boxing upstairs, like like an old school boxing place, like wood floor, <laughs> just had that smell. And at the time I, I still hadn't fought yet, you know, so I was really like intimidated. But then you went downstairs and there was like a cage and like, I was all no game. It's something yeah. I really wasn't uh, familiar with. It was, um, it was a 10th planet school. It's 10th planet Spokane. I don't think it's uh, currently around. Um, the coach's name was R Dub and, but they were just so great and they really brought me in and I did a bunch of like no gi and all this stuff. And Still always a white belt, you know, still, uh, you know, just trying to figure things out. And, um, it, you know, like, and then I started getting good. Like, I started, like, tapping people. Like, started tapping training partners. Started hitting all this other stuff. Um, so, like, getting my blue belt, uh, it was it was really cool. It was yeah. really, it was really, like, it was like, yes. Like, 
this like you know you're so focused on the belts you're so focused on the stripes you know like they really like get you and then you get that blue belt and you're like oh, okay but for me it's always been like all right now i want that next one like yeah. now i want now it's time to get better like now i'm a blue belt the expectation is i'm gonna like have blue belt caliber jujitsu and that's how it's always been for me it's like just getting the belt I mean, it feels good. Like, like yes, like this is like validation for all the hard work, and this is validation for all like everything that I put myself through to get to this point. But now it's like you gotta believe that in the rear view. You yeah, know I mean? definitely. Because like, it doesn't mean anything. Correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. It doesn't. It, I mean, it's. It, you should look at your belt. In my personal opinion, you should look at your belt as like this is an achievement for you. It's not for anybody else. Like Correct. this is just like yes, like this is. But it doesn't mean that you're gonna shit on everyone who's got a lower belt than you. In fact, more often than not, I gotta tell you, the people who give me the most trouble are like blue belts, purple belts, you know, they're savages, you know? So mm -hmm. it, it, it felt amazing, but at the same time, it's always like there's more work to be done. Yeah. Like, you can do better, cool. you can be better. I, lo I love that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I kinda, I remember getting my blue belt like, okay, I did the first thing, like I'm in this thing now, you know what I mean? I, I feel a part of it a little more, so. Yeah. Um, Again, this is something I've been asking people because I think trying to draw people in jujitsu being my goal, but also help people stay on the mats longer. The blue belt blues, right? That that idea, hey, people get a blue belt and then we never see them again. What do, why do you personally think that happens? And then what can we do to help people stay on the mats for longer? Man, I, I gotta be honest with you. I've never understood. I've never understood the blue belt <laughs> blues. Like I've never understood like, you know, cause like to get a blue belt, you really, have to like put yourself in it you know what i mean like yeah. even if you're not training you know five days a week you're still gonna be doing the two to three times a week for up to a year and then just to get it and then to stop it just it just really boggles my mind um but you know honestly it's all about you know as a gym and as a community it's about encouraging each other you know like i i want to have everyone that can train to train mm. because having a good group of people not only is it just good for the community and just like good for like the camaraderie and it just builds a good school, but it also like it helps me as a as an athlete and as a jujitsu practitioner. The more bodies that I have to roll with, that means the more styles, the more tendencies I get to understand. You know, like uh, if I just only get to train with you know two or three people, I mean that's great. I'm glad I get to train, yeah. but man, I, I mean I just go out of my way to like. I want to encourage people. It's like, you know, you got your blue belt and then if I don't see it, like I'm going to be messaging. I'm like, come on, man. Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, yeah oh, I just can't do this. I can't do that. Like, I understand like the wor world is tough. Work happens, life happens. But the reality is like, you can always make time for yourself and for your health and for your well being. you know, cool. like, I mean, no, it's, 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 it's all just about like keeping people accountable. Like yeah. personally, I, like I said, I don't understand the blue belt blues. Okay, I get it. But sure. um, yeah, no, um, Again, you you've been coaching for a long time now. I mean, you literally, actually literally started coaching me in my jujitsu thing, right? So yeah. you're purple when I started. Um, but also, I, I've seen it. Your coaching style, it's awesome. I love the learning technique from you, as well as kind of the personal training style. I mean, you do your private lessons, and you've taken certain people under your wing. Shout out to Holly, right? Oh, um, oh. And I think you probably have a great perspective of the difference men and women go through in jujitsu, right? So I, it. How do you explain and or get women excited about jujitsu and, and make them feel maybe a little more comfortable on it um, w with the sport that we love so much? I mean, here the reality of the situation is that jujitsu is actually for everyone. It's literally for everyone. Yeah. Now, like um, when you know, like women come and train, I think it's important that uh, there's a good understanding in the room that you know everyone needs to. We not every role needs to be like a super competition role. You know, like if I'm rolling with somebody who is, you know, 150 pounds as a, a black belt or just as someone's bigger, I just need to have an understanding that I don't need to try to hurt my partner. Like I don't need to prove anything. Like I should be able to like look at the situation and roll well without, you know, there shouldn't, have, like when someone rolls with me, there's never a risk of them getting injured. You know, like mm -hmm. I think good jujitsu is the ability to inflict pain but the wherewithal not to. Mm -hmm. You know, like sometimes when people roll, you know, and they, they go for a submission, then all of a sudden one guy's screaming. I mean, that should never be a situation, right? Because yeah. there should always be a level of control in that. So I think the responsibility lies on the instructor. I think it, I think the responsibility is on like uh, the attitude of that the gym has. You know, I've been to some gyms where it's pretty, 
you know, it's like, Ugh, like nonstop, we're going, like we're going training to fight. And then there's other gyms where it's a lot more like relaxed and chill. It's a good, it's a good area. So, mm -hmm. I mean, for, you know, for women, for one, it's just, you got to find yourself a good gym and it's all, yeah. it's like, you know, the first gym you walk into may not be the right fit for you. And that's totally okay. Just like with everything else, you know, I've trained, I've been really fortunate to train at a lot of gyms. Um, in my time doing jujitsu, I've trained at a, a, some phenomenal places. I've trained at some kind of nice places, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, so you know, give yourself, especially now. There's so many options. Like I would say, like test it out, right? Cool. Go to one place, take a class, talk to the instructor, kind of see what kind of how what kind of students how they like um, interact with you. And then if it's not really up to your speed, that's fine. There's lots of other places, lots of other gyms. So just give yourself that opportunity. They like don't don't be. Um, Try not to be put off if maybe your first experience at the gym isn't the greatest. Um, hopefully that's not the case, but just definitely just keep yeah. trying because there's there's a place for you somewhere, and you'll you won't be sorry that you went. Cool. No, I dig that. Um, for those who don't know you, right? You also fought. You've boxed. Yeah. How and when did you start making that transition to? Hey, I love jujitsu, but I also want to get in the ring, get in the cage. What was that like? Yeah, so like I said, I've always been an MMA poser. You know, <laughs> like, from the gig, I was such a poser, you know, wearing tap out shirts and just being the coolest guy ever. But um, so when I started doing jujitsu, it was only in the gi. We only train no gi once a week. And then um, there was just kind of a situation where, uh, you know, I kind of wasn't really seeing eye to eye with the instructor at the gym I was at. And uh, I decided to leave. And back then that was, you know, you know, it was a kind of, it was a big deal. And yeah. um, there was another gym uh, across town. It was called Yakima MMA. Um, the head coach there was Rich Garen. And I, and I remember there was like this imaginary beef between like the Gracie Baja Yakima and the Yakima MMA. And I was always like, oh, no, we can't lose to any of those guys. You know, they're <laughs> trying to turn to you, like, kill those guys. And I'm like, yeah, Yakima MMA, boo. And then it turned out to be the only other place I could train. I was like, I was like, hey, do you think maybe I could come and train you guys? <laughs> and uh, you know, Rich Garen, you know, uh, you know, rest in peace, uh, Rich Garen. Um, mm -hmm. He really uh, just, I mean, he just took me in, man. And uh, Rich Garen is like to this day, like one of my, um, you know, one of the best coaches I've ever had. He's like a father figure. He's one of the you know greatest people I've ever known. And he really, uh, <clears throat> sorry, he a little. Uh, mm -hmm. He was just, just a great, great guy, and he really taught me so much about you know perseverance i was still really heavy when i when i went there you know mm -hmm. but he was the one who like convinced me that i could fight he's like do you have the skills man like and i was like he's like ah you know now i got this going on like i always had a lot of excuses like i wanted to do it but i was so scared that i was gonna fail and he like and he made he pushed me into it you know he mm -hmm. he was really like not pushed me into it but he just encouraged he would never stop encouraging me he's like you got this you got this you got this so he ended up booking a fight at heavyweight, I remember because I had to cut weight to make 265. Mm -hmm. I remember that, and uh, I went in there and was this pre blue belt then? No, it was after I had my blue belt. Okay, and uh, I had my blue belt, and I just started, I think I was training for probably like eight months in MMA when I took the fight, and I was so nervous. And I and I went in there, and I just uh, you know had these long tap out shorts on because <laughs> of course why not you know yep. camo shorts. And uh, I had this scrap with this kid, and you know, I ended up stopping him in the second round. And uh, that was like one of the greatest feelings of my life because it was just like, man, the success, and like, you know, you got your whole like tribe around you just cheering for you, and everyone's so happy for you. And that was like the most positive and the most love that I've ever like felt, you know, ever, you know. And uh, I was just like, just hooked. Um, and yeah, and after that, I fought. Throughout my whole college uh, days, I did my entire amateur career, which is about 13, uh, 13 fights. And I went all the way from heavyweight to 205, 185. And then my last amateur fight was a 185 title, which I won. Sick. So I was like, I, I amassed a pretty good record. I lost one time. Um, I got knocked out in like 30 seconds in my second fight. Oh, so I went from like this crazy high of like, yes, like, Da, 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 da. Like I was tapping up with my hands, and then my second fight, I thought I was gonna do the same thing, and nope. <laughs> like so, it, but it, like it grounds you, right? Yeah, like there's yeah. no like there's no like bullshit in this sport. Like you're either good or someone's. There's always gonna be someone better than you, mm -hmm. and you're gonna know about it, and then you can make the decision. Like, are you gonna like tell yourself like ah, I should have won that, or like it was lucky, or are you gonna be like no, I'm gonna get better. It's never gonna happen again. Mm -hmm. So I lost that fight, and then I didn't lose another fight all the way through my amateur career. Wow. But uh, you know, I owe that all to uh, Rich and uh, you know, Julie Guerin. Um, 
they really, I mean, they took me in, there was family. And like I said, like with like jujitsu, that was something that I've always really looked for because I never had that myself as a young man, mm -hmm. but I found it in every gym that I've ever been to. Just like that sense of family, you know, uh, from Rich and Julie to James Weed and uh, his wife, Sarah, to Ivan Salivary, I mean, I mean, and there's probably some people that uh, um, I'm missing, and please yeah. forgive me, but I you know I, I love y'all. Uh, you've <laughs> been sure. a huge part of my life, so yeah, I've been uh, really fortunate. It's correct. So correct me if I'm wrong. So it sounds like from when you started college area, white belt training. You, you said you fought throughout college, yep. and then you got down to a 185 and you fought at a title. So I mean, you lost 180 something something pounds in like three, four years. I yep. mean. What, what? Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it was just, uh, <laughs> I, I just had it in my brain. Like I, I kind of had this, um, when, when I found, I had this like personality when I find something that I'm really into that that's it. Like I lock on, yeah. like I didn't, I didn't drink alcohol. Like I didn't, I worked out all the time, like a couple days a week, like I would study like a little bit. Like I barely did school, I'll be honest with you. I, I took very easy, <laughs> I took very easy classes mm -hmm. so that I could train. Um, twice a day, you know, I ate, I mean, I didn't eat well, but I ate like salads, you know, like I, to me, it was like eating a salad was nutrition. Right. So I just eat salads for like every meal and I just dropped all this weight. And, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it was, it was crazy because all of a sudden, you know, you'd be like your pants wouldn't fit anymore. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, like girls are like being like, oh my God, you look good. And like, no one ever said that shit to me. And I was like, oh. Oh, all right. All right. And I was yeah. like, I started feeling, I started really feeling myself. But the goal was always like, gotta get those gold medals, you know. Gotta, yeah. gotta, um, you know. That was all. I was just all. I was all in on training. I was mm -hmm. all in on jujitsu. I was all in on MMA. Um, yeah, that's yeah. fun, man. Yeah. That's so fun. I, yeah. I love hearing that. And and I remember at the time. You know, we, we became friends and you were still 170 at the time, still fighting a bunch. Again, you were pro belt and fighting, boxing, everything. So I looked up to you and all the OGs at Ivan's yeah. and I didn't know your story until like two years in, until we became like actual friends yeah. and we've been friends for 10 years now. But it was like, I was like, wait a minute, what? And you had to go back and show me like yeah. one picture you may still have of that where I was like, oh my God, like that's crazy to got, me. That's so got exciting. A pic, got a picture of me in grandma's kitchen with my long sleeve 3XL tap ass shirt, <laughs> you know, with my fist. Up, you know, like, I, hope, I hope I never get famous and that picture comes up. Right. <laughs> well, do that it. again, where I think it's, it's truly inspiring. It's, and it's always been cool to me being a friend. Like, no, my friend did that. People can do that. Like, and so can you. So can other people 100%. to make that decision and go through something like that. So it's awesome. Man. I mean, the big thing about it is, is like, you just have to commit. Yeah. Just like with anything, it's, you have to commit. And, and it's, you have to also get an understanding, like, you're going to fail. Like it's, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have your bad days. You're gonna have your days where you're like, what am I doing? But it's every day you just keep doing the same thing and you're gonna get better. That's yeah. all it is. If you show up, you will get better. Cool. You know what I mean? Yep, I love that. Um, for my own curiosity and the people, our friends and family who are gonna see this and as it trickles on and maybe stays on the internet forever, <laughs> uh, talk to me about how you found Ivan, a man we both love very much and who's been a mentor to us and your relationship over through the years, through through fighting, through through what he's done for us and mentorship and everything, and like, what was what was that experience like? Totally talking about Ivan. <laughs> so um, I I was fighting. So after college, I uh, told myself like I'm just gonna give myself a year after call after I graduate. I'm gonna give myself a year. Um, I moved in with Rich and Julie and lived in their basement, and uh, I'm just gonna fight. I'm just gonna fight. I'm just gonna fight. So I did my pro debut uh, at 170. And uh, I ended up winning by uh, knockout in the second round, and I was just on cloud nine. You know, I got paid, right? Like they put me up in a hotel, and I was like, "Oh man, this is it! Like this is how it starts." You know, I got like my thousand dollar check, oh. and I was like, "I'm living the life." And then, um, you know, and then unfortunately, you know, I started getting injured. You know, I started, mm -hmm. um, you know, my body. One of the things you know, that I realize now is that I was really unhealthy for like a really long time, and the reality is, is that you know, walking around for as long as I did at that weight. Like I put a lot of pressure like on my joints and on my, you know, my knee and everything like that. So I started getting hurt when I started really, really training. And um, so I, I took another fight in Oregon and uh, I had kind of like a, a, a calf issue. And I was like, ah, oh, no, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. And it turns out I had like a partial tear in my calf. And I ended up, and I fought, I ended up taking the fight. 
And the guy just ragdolled me, man. Like, I just remember I was just so disheartened. He was just taking me down. He wasn't, like, beating me up too bad. But I just, like, I just couldn't find any success yeah. anywhere. And just for three rounds, he just took me down, pushed me against the cage, punched me in the face, elbowed me in the head. I'd get up. He'd take me down again. And I was so disheartened. And I was just so, cr I was just crushed. Because I had it lost in, you know, however long. And, um... And I remember going in the back room and I was just like crying, like just, I mean, that was just the, that was the most emotional I've ever been after a fight. And after, and then, you know, you get back and at the time I wasn't working and I was just really like aware of like, man, you're, you're fucking broke. And like, you know, you just lost this fight. You know, it's like, I was like, I got to change something up. I got to change something up. So, mm -hmm. um, I ended up my, my, a couple of my best friends, uh, actually lived in Mercer Island and they're like, hey, dude, just come over here. Just move. You can stay in a room. You know, at the time I was like really like, you know, kind of lost. I didn't really know what I wanted to do and just come and stay like, you know, so I kind of made just the decision. I packed up my car and, you know, zoomed over. My car broke down all the way over there. And I ended up just parking in front of their house for like six months. But um, at, I had done a visit to uh, Ivan's back in the day and I was aware of Ivan. It just of like of his like history in the UFC and, you know, just like his credentials. And I was like, oh man, like this is like where you, you gotta be like, this is Ivan Salivary. Like, oh, they got like a wrestling class. Like what? Like a, a class dedicated wrestling. I'm like not a great wrestler. Like I've never been a great wrestler. And I was like, this is where it is. You know, I gotta, I gotta do this. So um, I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I told, I was like, right, listen, I'm just gonna go train to Ivan's. And I was nervous. I was so nervous when I walked in the door because I was, because when I left Yakima, you know, you know, at the time, like, um, you know, Rich and I kind of had a little bit of a disagreement and, um, you know, it's all water under the bridge now and, you know, love all them, but that's just how it goes, right? Yep. You know, you're a young man, you don't always uh, make the right choices, you know, you know what I mean? Like looking back, you know, I was, a little, a, I was a little nimrod and now I'm just now looking back, I, you know, I wish I had, but that was just what it was. Yeah. And uh, I walked in and, you know, Ivan was there and I was like, hey, hello, Mr. Sonberry. He's like, He's like, speak up, you know, like, he's like, well, what are you doing? Like, what I get, you know, he was so like, so different than anyone I'd ever spoken to. I was like, I was like, I'm so, so sorry. But uh, man, Ivan just, he's just another one of those guys, right? He just, it was nothing but love from day one. You know, it was nothing but, uh, you know, just encouragement in his own way. Ivan has a very, and uh, Ivan's uh, Ivan has a very distinct way of encouraging you. But right away, you know, it was the same thing. It's like, there was that camaraderie like you went in there and like the, at the time the fight practices were late at night so i'd go in i would do jujitsu and i would do my wrestling and then i would get some water and maybe like try to eat something then we do mma sometimes we wouldn't get out there until like 10 30 11 o'clock but that was the life that i wanted right like i it was the only bummer part is i actually had a job i had to go to at like 6 a.m so you know like but i, I mean those were just like the glory days we, I mean, we had just a killer's row, uh, a murderer's row, you know, like Robbie Larson, Andy Pavez, you know, we had Pina Casio, um, you know, Jacob Boyson, just like, you know, Polly, even little young Polly, you know, he was a savage with kickboxing. I mean, there was just a group of monsters in there. And, um, man, I just, just go in there and bang it out. And then, you know, at the end of the day, we'd just do it all again the next, you know, it was, it was yeah. just really cool. That, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, Moving forward to fairly recently, I think it's a year, maybe two years ago now, you got your black belt. I did get my black belt. Which yeah. was super cool for me, because it happened as a surprise, I think even to you, you didn't know. But it, like when I saw the pictures, because you went out to Spokane, yeah. me and Paul, we're, we're all texting, like, dude, my, my friend just got his black belt. <laughs> so you know how I get super excited yeah. for other people's stuff and your success. And I was like, wow, the first person I know that's my training partner, friend for 10 years now, like, wow, just got his black belt. What did that feel like for you? Man, I gotta be honest with you. I was feeling like it was super undeserved, to be totally honest mm -hmm. with you. I was like, I, I, like, I was like, James, I'm not a black belt. Like, no, I'm not ready for this. Like, because it just, in my mind, a black belt was just this, like, you have your black, like, that's it. Like, you're in, in like, you're basically like John Wick. Like, nobody else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, every black belt that I had ever rolled with, not to say, that, like, I mean, I, I had done well against the black belts in competition and at the gym, but I was just like, there was just an aura, like, with James, like, he was like the black belt. He would just sweep you and just handle you. Like, mm -hmm. it just felt like something different. And when I, when he gave me that black belt and he called me up, I was like, I don't feel like that. I don't feel like I'm that guy. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that it, it's not that, you know, it's like I, I put in my time, you know, I've, I made it a point to be a part of that community. Like I was a coach, I traveled yeah. with guys. 
So there's more to a black belt than just you can just beat everybody. There's more to being a black belt than you're just an encyclopedia of jujitsu, which would be awesome. I wish <laughs> I wish I was an encyclopedia of jujitsu, but mm -hmm. I'm not an encyclopedia of jujitsu. But what I what I will say is that the only thing I know for sure is that I know nothing. Yeah. Like that, that's how I feel. But that gives me the opportunity to like learn more. You know, I'm like, I'm not really stuck in my ways. I feel like I'm constantly still evolving. You know, um, uh, that's why like when I roll with, when I was training with James, I trained primarily in the gi and I loved rolling in the gi. That was like one of my favorite things. And then, you know, when I left, I started focusing more on no gi. And now I'm like here, at, you know, 10th planet, you know, Nate Orchard and I've learned so much from him. And so it's just like this evolution. I'm yeah. just like so excited to continue to like learn and, like fine tune my game and add yeah. to my game, you know. Yeah, like, for sure. I mean, we live in a time where there's just so many innovations coming out. Like it's so hard to keep up with it all, but it's so exciting at the same time. Yeah. So has it maybe now settled in? Have you kind of accepted? It's been a couple of years now where it's like, okay, this feels right. You know, it still it still feels like uh, weird in a sense. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, it's like it, and again, like me, the way I grew up, you know. It just, people will tell you you're worthless all the time. So that's like something that sticks with me. And I know that's like a dumb thing, mm -hmm. but it sticks with me sometimes, you know? So I have a hard time giving myself like props, but um, the reality is like, I, you know, I earned that black belt and James yeah. is, um, he wouldn't have given it to me unless he believed that I was a black belt. And that's something that like gives me a lot of like pride. Cool. Um, so, you know, I, I, that's one of the reasons why I love Nogi, right? There's no belts, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. that, everyone's equal. You know what I mean, yeah. like, and, that, and that's what I love a lot about it. So, um, I'm very proud um, that uh, you know James uh, gave me that black belt. I'm really proud that he believed that I was someone who he could trust to carry on like his lineage. And uh, you know, I, it's, it's 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 I'm very proud yeah. of that achievement. I love that. I mean, well, as a friend that you've whooped on for years and years, I believe you're deserving of it if that counts for anything, <laughs> so, which yeah, which is which, which is awesome. Um, you start talking about kind of your game and and what you. Not what you've been learning, but that it's always constant learning. Sure. Um, what is your game specifically? What is your go-to's? Man, um, it really depends on what my weight is. <laughs> uh, so right now I'm a little bit more burly than I tend to be. So now I'm all about that top game. I'm all about uh, finding ways to get in the mount. Um, I'm all about uh, trying to control the mount position and uh, like using that to take the back. I love taking the back. I, I, I prefer chokes as far as like my submissions because um, you know, you know, in your competition, I mean, guys are so tough now, man. Guys are so like skilled. They know all the counters and stuff. And you get someone in a gnarly armbar, and you're trying to, and they're just like, nope, nope, nope. Let it, let it go, let it go. But with chokes, there's no, there's no tough guys with the choke. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter if you're like 300 pounds or you know, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You throw, you throw a choke on somebody, they're gonna go to sleep. So I, I, I definitely prefer chokes. You know, Darces is probably like a. My favorite technique, I think. Uh, for the longest time, I thought I had invented a dar setup. Like I called it the the charts. Uh huh. Oh, I'm familiar. Yeah, you know, I've been caught with it too many times. And then yeah, I realized that people have been doing that for like 30 years, like longer than I've been longer than I've been doing jujitsu. So I'm like, ah. But but if I if my uh, memory serves me right, it was the first move that you felt like you discovered on your own. It may have been a move, but you're like, wait, no one showed me this yet. So it was the first time that I developed a technique without anyone showing it to me. Yeah. And that's why I was like, I invented this. <laughs> because uh, like I had mentioned to you when I did MMA, when I was a terrible wrestler, right? So I did a lot of guard stuff. But when guys would pass my guard, I would just find myself in this position where like, oh, wait, their arm, their head and their arm are right next to each other. So if I just like scoot myself out to the side, oh, there it is. And I just remember being like, and then I would just hit it on everybody, like yeah. the highest level guys. To this day, every high, almost every higher belt guy that I roll with, I've hit that move on. Yep. I've only hit it, like I only hit it once, because <laughs> after that, they'll never let it happen again, because it's a little, it's kind of sneaky, but I'm like, that the technique works. Yep, like, that, yep. That's like my ace in the, the ace in my back pocket. I love that, the charts. Yeah. I've, I've been caught with it too many times, and I use it quite a bit, because I fell in love with Darcy's yeah. because of you. <laughs> I added my own little twist on it now, or I'll yeah, reach out, yeah. grab my leg to kind of force it, so I don't have to just catch it nowadays, you know? So yeah, definitely, it's, it's evolving. Yeah, I'm, charts such, I'm, such a, I'm such a sweaty beast that I love. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't have to suck it down, I'm just like, Ugh! Yeah. It's like slide out. <laughs> yep. Um, so as you've been coaching now for years and years at this point, um, what is a, something positive on the mats that you enjoy seeing as a coach? Man, so many things. Um, I love, 
I love seeing uh, a new person walk in and every new person that walks in has that same look on their face like I don't think I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> it, I mean honestly like yeah. you can see like there's nervousness like you know they're really apprehensive. What I love is seeing that like fade away. Mm. Like I love uh, there's actually a, a, a gentleman uh, that actually started coming here. I, I won't say his name, but um, it's so cool watching him come in and uh, he's a little bit more uh, um, confident each time. But what I also see is like he comes in and he's got the gnar. Anyone who starts jiu-jitsu, you're gonna start getting these gnarly bruises <laughs> yeah. just all over. But you know, like now, like we're weathered, we don't have them as much. But a new person, it's like <laughs> it's like they're Dalmatians. They just have spots. So I just see this guy come in. And he's like coming in and he's just got these bruises, just these purple bruises. I'm like, but he wants it. You know, yeah. that guy, that guy, like I hope, and really when you see someone walk in with like those legs like that, like you know that's someone who's like loving what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, there's so much in this world that we have to do, like, right? Like you have to get a job. And hopefully that job is something that you're interested in. Hopefully that job gives you like some sort of satisfaction. but. Sometimes that's not the case, right. Right? right? So finding something that you can pour yourself into that's actually for you, that benefits you, that's only for you, I think that's like something that's so important and it's um, something that I feel like a lot of people are lacking. But like when I see people come in and they're learning, they're having fun, they're laughing, you know, and they're getting their training in, they're, you know, they sit back and, you know, like that's what I like to see. That's yeah. what I love. You know, I mean, and it's always cool when people come up to you and like, oh man, I did that move, man, it worked so well. I'm like, yeah. But the reality is, is <laughs> the reality is, what that is, is that's just me paying it forward from everyone before me. Right? Correct. Like, yep. I didn't, I didn't, I, feel the I, didn't same. I didn't come up with any of that stuff. Uh -huh. You know, I learned it. Like maybe I watched like a video, or maybe like a seminar, or maybe something that like Nate or James or you know Rich showed me back in the day, like my howdy choke or whatever. Right? Like. Me yep. passing on the howdy choke that Rich Garen taught me is just like paying it forward. Cool. That's that's how I feel about it. So, um, yeah, man, I, I I just love it. I just love I just love that when new people come in and I just see them doing stuff and I'm just like, man, this is how we continue jujitsu. Yeah. This is how it keeps on going. Cool. Right? Um, again, on on the positive side, on the positive notes of jujitsu, uh, from my perspective, again, another shout out to Holly. She has an amazing story. Yeah. You gave her her blue belt. For, for all intents and purposes, right? Yes. You gave Holly her blue belt. Um, what was that like working with her? And, and was that the first belt you gave? I mean, what did it feel like? Because I think, and I'm hoping she'll sit down with me because she does have a great story, but as a, as a coach side of it, working with her, what was that like? And if that was your first belt you gave? You know, technically it was uh, the first belt that I uh, handed out as a black belt. Um, I mean, it felt, it felt good. You know, it's, Holly is somebody who, works really hard yep. you know i mean you know so, like for some people jujitsu is very natural mm -hmm. and for others like they really have to work at it like yeah. they really have to like learn not just the movements but also how their body works like what works best for them like how it, so for some there can be a lot of things that go into it but holly's always been somebody who's just like <laughs> like so tough and like just always wants to get in there, always wants to go, like just wants that contact, like she's about the action, you know, yeah. she wants to roll and that, that's so refreshing. Um, and it's so, and it makes it so much fun as a coach to like, to train someone like that and help someone like that. Um, so yeah, it was, it was, it was great, you know, it's like, but again, like what I told, you know, just like I said before, it's like, this is just the beginning, like this is just, you know, just think of this as just your little like notch. Like, yep, you did good. You you got the you got some basics down, but I mean, there's so much more. Right? Yeah. There, it's, there's like infinity jujitsu. There's so much to get out. Absolutely. Right? Um, now hit me with the inverse of that. What about as a coach on the master that you don't like? What's something that grinds your gears? Man, people not paying attention. People talking when I'm talking drives me nuts. Um, <laughs> I've seen you snap a few times. Yeah, uh, <laughs> well deserving, and you have more patience than most people I, I know. So when it happens, it's valid. I, but. Try, I try to be really patient. I think <laughs> I think a big thing. Um, I don't see it too often, but I have seen it. Um, I don't like uh, to see people bullied on mats. Yes. It's not something that I see a lot, but I have seen before, and I'm I'm very quick to say something because that's not what this is about. Like you know, there is a level of obviously this is, this is combat sport. We are here to, you know, we're gonna engage in, like, we're gonna spar, we're gonna roll, but we're not here to, like, put each other down. We're not here to hurt each other. Mm -hmm. We're not here to, like, make each other feel like 
shit, you know what I mean? Like, that's not what this is about. And if you come in here and you treat, and you make this like a shitty place for someone else who wants to come in here and learn and wants to do the positive things, yeah. um, like, I'm not gonna let that stand like in front of me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm like, I, like I just, I'm not, I'm not with that at all. I don't have, I don't see it very often. It's right. something that definitely happened more um, in the past. But, uh, you know, like I said, and the reality is, is like for somebody who maybe takes pleasure in beating up somebody that isn't as good as them, I'll roll with you and then I'll beat the shit out of you. Yep. And then I'll let you know, like, is that cool? Was that fun? Like, is that, does that make you feel good? Like, do you want to keep on training now? Like, there's always going to be someone who's better than you. Oh, yeah. Like being better than someone at this point in time, that's good for you. You know what I mean? Like, it's good. Like, but like, dude, there's always someone out there that's going to make you look silly. Like, I, I mean, honestly, like yeah. as much as I've trained, I've rolled with some people where I'm like, what am I even doing? Like, do I even know jujitsu right now? Like, what, what is this? You know, I've, I've had some guy grab onto my wrist and I've been like, oh, I guess you just, you just have my wrist You now. just own this. You just have this until you decide to let go. Like, my black belt and all my years of training is like, oh, I can't even get this guy to let go of my wrist. So, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, stay humble. You know, stay yeah. humble, you know, be, like, be there for each other. Like, don't, don't be a dick. Yeah. You know, like, that, that's my biggest thing is like, don't be a bully. Like, you know, like. The world sucks. Like the world's gonna be mean. Like don't bring that shit in here. Cool. You know? I love that, man. No, that's, and that's a great point. Nipping on the butt immediately when you see that. Yeah. I'm the same way. We we've, we've both had our stories of bullying. Funny that car ride we had taken. We were like, wait, is this why me, you, and Jared? We all started kind of the same reason. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's just man. Like for me, it's just so unnecessary. Yeah. You know, like we got to deal with so much shit nowadays. And yeah. you know, like this is a this is a place where you come in and you leave all that stuff at the door. Yep. you know come back to it later if you Absolutely. want to but in here is this is like to me this is like this is like holy ground you know i don't i don't mean yes. to be like weird about it but this is it's like fact. this is my this is my church you know this is my sanctuary like i don't if and if i see somebody violate that i don't like it yep <laughs> I, 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 will show, I will show you the door yeah i love that man um one thing that was always cool to me is that you have in fact went to different gyms that lived that road and lifestyle yeah. for a while what in your experience makes a successful gym. Oof, man. Um, so it all starts. I mean, it all starts with the leader of the gym. Like, like, what does that look like? Is it is it somebody who's fought a lot? Someone who's got a lot of experience? You know, you don't have to be a world champion to lead a gym. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be like you know the best of the best to you know lead a gym. What you do need to be is you have to be honest with your skills. You have to be honest about your technique, right? Like, mm -hmm. hopefully, if you own a gym, you're not looking at YouTube right before, <laughs> you know, you, you teach a class and show something that maybe you're not very proficient with. Um, but you know, having a good attitude, like fostering like a good place where you know it's not about, yeah, you know, like just making sure like you have like a couple guys are like the best and everyone else kind of just is like whatever like we don't care about them it's like it's a community you know yeah. like the gyms that create a real community are the ones that i think are the best you cool. know the and i've trained i've really been fortunate to train in a lot of really cool places like even like the big gyms like extreme couture that i trained at. i mean it was awesome like uh you know like eric nixick um you know you know rest in peace robert Fallis. you know it was like one of the best coaches i've ever had in my life and one of the most encouraging people and it you know it's just like it doesn't matter like if you have those like key people there if you have the people that are there to give you the information can like encourage you but not blow smoke up your ass i mean that's that's what you need that's what makes a good job yeah that's great um at this stage of your jujitsu career understanding all that you have from you know the the weight loss journey the fighting the boxing and now just kind of more on the heavy nogi grappling side um, how would you sum up what jujitsu or how jujitsu benefits you off the mats? <sighs> off the mats. So, I mean, honestly, it, it's just a, a level of things just don't bother me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like jujitsu's really made me aware of like what's important and what's not. Um, especially, like I said, um, you know, I used to be like this really angry kid. <laughs> so stupid. I, I mean, I was I was such a douchebag. Like I would go, like I'd be at a bar and someone would bump into me a big what? Yeah, you know, it's, it's just so stupid. But what jujitsu has taught me is a, a, just a level of self control. You know, a level of self control, and not only just in like my anger, but also like in my diet and my life. You know, it's it's just made me a really. It's made me confident, but not confident to the point of where it's like hurting me. But just confident, yeah. like I'm. I'm good. Like yeah. I, I am a good person. I'm a strong person. I'm capable of really great things. 
I, I can fail and that's okay. Like it just, yeah. it just makes me feel okay with like whatever happens, it's gonna be okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like sure. nothing is the end of the world, you know? And, and like I said, I've had, like, you know, when I lost that, my second pro fight, I mean, I literally just thought the world was gonna end. Like I was just so like, just beside myself with like grief and you know, whatever. But now, you know, I, I look back and like my losses are just important as my victory. That's kind of cliche, but honestly, like if without my losses, without the bad things that happened to me, I won't appreciate the good things. I won't learn from those bad things. So mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just, it just really, it's just, it's put me, it's given me a perspective that's just allowed me to handle life better. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just Definitely. like, I'm, you know, things don't bother me as much. You know, if like, you know, you know, you're sitting in an office and maybe someone's like chirping at you or, you know, whatever, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, you're just like, all right, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Just, yeah. every, you know, everything totally. just, it just gives me the ability to handle life. And I also know that, hey, if I'm having a bad day, I got jujitsu later and I know I'm going to feel better. Cool. You know what I mean? Like sure. as bad of a day I'm having, I've never been like, you know, I've had to force myself to come to, to the gym plenty of times, but I've never regretted going to the gym ever. Yeah. So. No, I hear that. Yeah. Um, if you were king for a day and could change one thing about jujitsu, what would it be? Add something, take something away, positive, negative. If you could change anything about jujitsu, what would it be? Oh my God. Change anything about jujitsu, what would it be? Man, I just want more time in the day to train, man. Like, honestly, <laughs> for like, you dude, personally, more time. Like, like, oh my God, I just wish, like, I just wish I had infinite number, like, I, like a Dragon Ball Z, you know, like they have like the room where you go in for a day, but you actually train for a year. Like, I want that yeah. so bad in my life. Cause there's so much to learn, you know, yeah. like with the Gi, like, I mean, I know if I put a jacket on right now, I'm gonna be so rusty, but like, there's something so amazing about rolling in a Gi and there's something so awesome and like exhilarated about rolling no Gi. I mean, man, if I had to change anything, Man, I don't know that I would change it. I mean, I just lo- I just love it. I just love everything about it. I mean, I guess uh, I mean, as somebody who's had like multiple knee injuries, <laughs> there's like there's a part of me that loves heel hooks. The other part of me is like, oh, man, just, can you really not like can you not give me that? Because I'm just gonna tap out so quick like a little punk. But yeah. um, no, honestly, man, I, I just love jujitsu. I love where it's going. I don't think I would I don't think I would change a, a thing. The only thing I wish is I just had more time. Cool. I just I wish know. I had more time. I wish I had started when I was like three years old. I mean, you know, which, uh, <laughs> there's so much stuff. Like I'm grateful for where I am, but yeah. you know, I'd still do some things different. But yeah, more time of the day. I love, more I time love of that. Day. And I think everyone who trains jujitsu, and and once you start training jujitsu, you'll think the same thing. Yeah. Because everyone always says, "I wish I started sooner." I just wish so, I started sooner. Yep. Yeah. Um, lastly, my brother, outside of jujitsu, what do you do that's good for the soul? Um. Man, I have a, uh, I have an amazing uh, girlfriend and uh, an amazing dog. As he's a little uh, pit bull, he's a rescue, and I love hanging out with my dog, mm-hmm. going on jogs with him. Uh, you know, going to the park. Um, I love hanging out with my friends. I just like, I just like living. Yeah. You know, it's like it's not just it's not just one thing. I just I just love uh, just having the chance to like be in a situation where. You know, I came from like a really like always like really stressful, like something's always going wrong and something's all this stuff. And I built this life where I can like take a moment just to breathe and, you know, just kind of enjoy. Like I I just enjoy like the stillness. Like I I like going stuff and doing stuff. But honestly, I just kind of uh, I love taking the time to just really appreciate like my friends and, you know, my my family and, um, you know, that. And I, lo- I love to eat. I'm not gonna lie. I, 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 I fucking love to eat. So, you know, it's like uh, restaurants is what yeah. I enjoy outside of jiu jitsu. Oh, <laughs> Food, family, girlfriend, and dog. That, yeah. that, that is good for the soul, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brother, I appreciate you sitting down with me before I, mean, I go on this thank journey, you, thank man. You, thank you. I, this is and, awesome, man. And I, I gotta be honest, man. Like, I'm so pumped for you going on this uh, trip and uh, the, all the work that you put into that van. I mean, I think something really, really cool is gonna come for this. So, I mean, I can't wait to see what you do. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you. And if you're still here, thank you for for uh, sticking around. Shout out to Jocko Fuel and Origin. Uh, these things are delicious. Check them out. Delicious. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. Guys, if you've made it this far along, finish the interview. I just want to thank you again uh, for supporting me along this journey and hopefully you got something awesome out of that interview. I, I really enjoy doing these, learning so much about life jiu-jitsu and everyone has such a unique and interesting perspective so i hope you got something out of that uh, that you can take with you and one last reminder uh, for 10 percent off on any jocko fuel products or origin usa products go to jockofuel.com 
or originusa.com. Uh, support yourself by getting some awesome products, supplements, protein shakes, greens, all that good stuff. Um, it helps support me along this journey. And again, supports yourself and an American-made company. So yeah, jockofuel.com. Check it out, guys. Thank you very much.